Before and throughout World War II, Martin Baker built a series of prototype aircraft. Improving with each design, their work would accumulate in the MB-5. The story of the Martin Baker fighters starts in 1929, during which Sir James Martin, an Irish migrant, began designing and producing aircraft. During the ensuing years, he and famous pilot Captain Valentine Baker, who was an ex-Navy, Army and Air Force officer that had fought during World War I and in the 1920s had taught Prince Edward to fly among many other famous flyers, became friends, accumulating in the establishment of Martin Baker in 1934. Their first design was tailored for the civilian market and incorporated weight-saving construction techniques in addition to low maintenance and operational requirements. This was to become known as the MB-1 and first flew during April 1935. Only one prototype was ever built, which was destroyed in a fire. When the Air Ministry issued a specification for an 8-gun aircraft with a top speed of 275 miles per hour, Martin Baker submitted the MB-2. Utilising similar construction methods to their civilian MB-1, the RAF did not pursue the project. The MB-2, in the RAF's opinion, did not offer any significant improvement over their current fighters. Next in line of development was the MB-3. This was developed in response to Air Ministry Specification F-1839, which was issued in 1939. Specification F-1839 specified that the aircraft be capable of 400 miles per hour and have no less than four 20mm cannons. The Rolls-Royce Griffin engine, although still in development, was the chosen power plant. By mid-1939, an order for three MB-3 prototypes had been signed. Delays occurred when in late 1939 it became apparent that the Griffin engine would not be available and the MB-3 was redesigned around the Napier Sabre engine. With the outbreak of World War II, further delays were encountered, with Martin Baker being required to assist in the construction of other aircraft. By the end of 1941, the decision had been made for the MB-3 to not enter production, but work still continued on the first prototype. The MB-3 prototype took to the air for the first time in August 1942, with Captain Valentina Baker at the controls. During subsequent test flights, there was trouble with the Napier Sabre engine overheating. Unfortunately, on the 12th of September 1942, with Captain Baker at the controls, the MB-3 experienced an engine failure on takeoff. In an effort to land the aircraft safely in the field, the aircraft crashed and caught fire, killing Captain Baker. His death was greatly felt by James Martin. The MB-4 was intended to be powered by a Rolls-Royce Griffin, but never left the design board. The final prototype to be produced by Martin Baker was the MB-5. The MB-5 was the accumulation of Martin Baker's work over the last decade and was by far the best performing aircraft. Developed from the second unfinished prototype of the MB-3, the third MB-3 prototype never came into existence, the MB-5 was powered by the 2340 horsepower Rolls-Royce Griffin 83 series engine that drove two three-bladed contra-rotating propellers. It took significant work by Martin Baker to convince the Air Ministry to grant them usage of the Griffin engine. Like the MB-3 before it, the MB-5 was built to specification F-1839, and while it was scheduled to fly in 1943, delays were encountered as Martin continued to alter and perfect the design. The finished prototype was more streamlined and sleeker than any of the Martin Baker's previous airframes, and bolstered four 20mm cannons within the wings. The MB-5 took to the air for the first time on May 23, 1944, with Brian Greenstead at the controls. From the RAS station located in Harwell, Greenstead was chief test pilot at Rotol at his propeller company. Following the first flight, Greenstead described the aircraft as, quote, an absolute swine to fly, end quote, due to the directional instability that was present throughout the flight. The MB-5 had utilised the same tail as the MB-3, so Martin decided to redesign the whole tail unit of the aircraft. 
The changes resulted in a taller vertical stabiliser and rudder. However, in October 1944, the Air Ministry had informed Martin Baker that the MB-5 would not proceed past the prototype stage. With the war coming to an end, the Air Ministry did not see the MB-5 making into service before the end. With the new tail unit, Greenstead was impressed with the new aircraft. By October 1945, the MB-5 had only accumulated 40 hours of flying time. Additionally, in October, it was showcased at RAE Farnborough, where in front of then Prime Minister Winston Churchill, it suffered an engine failure, but Greenstead managed to land safely after having the boy's canopy off due to oil and smoke impairing his vision. In February 1946, the MB-5 began official trials at the Aeroplane Armament Experimental Establishment at Boscombe Down. Testing revealed that the MB-5 could reach a speed of 460 miles per hour at 20,000 feet, with a climb rate of 3,800 feet per minute, a service ceiling of 40,000 feet, and a range of 1,100 miles. Pilots found it to be a stable gun platform with high manoeuvrability, although it was considered to have inferior acceleration and roll rate to that of other fighters of the time period. Where the MB-5 was superior though, was in its ease of maintenance, as seen through the fact that the aircraft was disassembled, transported, reassembled, ground tested and flown all on the day of its maiden flight. Squadron leader Jan Zorowski flew it at the 1946 Farnborough trade show, where he is reportedly quoted as describing the aircraft as, quote, the best airplane I have ever flown, end quote. Test pilot Eric Winkle-Brown was also impressed by the performance of the MB-5. By the late 1940s, the MB-5 had finished its flying days, with it being utilised as a training instrument by the RAF. Around 1950, it is reported that it moved from RAF Wattersham to RAF Bircham Newton, where supposedly the RAF used it as a grand target. By 1963, it had been burnt and scrapped, such an unflattering end to a superb aircraft. The MB-5 would be Martin Baker's final aircraft design, with the company turning its attention to ejection seats. Martin Baker today is still a world leader in ejection seats. This video is proudly sponsored by the official Tomato Wine store. Go fly over there by clicking the link in the description below to find some really awesome aviation products. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to go leave a like and subscribe for future videos. In the meantime, Keep flying high.